and welcome to the Bermuda Sun Video Year in Review. I'm Michaela Pierman. Thanks for joining us. For the next 15 minutes, we'll look back at the big stories of 2013. We'll take one quarter of the year at a time with the help of our four sponsors, Bermuda Air Conditioning, Bermuda Cable Vision, Gatorade, and Cell One. Let's get started. The news of 2013 began violently, even deadly. The bloody scene on Happy Valley Road in Pembroke played out at the Belvin's Grocery on January 23rd. Two men chased around the store and gunned down in a double murder. The victims were relatively young. Rico Farbridge is 25 and Haile Outerbridge 34. The older victim was a musician known as Star Child, and in the wake of his death, his music became an anthem for anti-violence in the community. Here's part of the music video called Concrete Jungle. It took months, but eventually police made an arrest in the case. Let's turn to politics now. As a new premier settled in, our former premier made a splash. Alex Scott went public with a strong push for anti-corruption legislation, a move he did not make while in office himself. His plan called for a five-person commission to investigate parliamentarians, civil servants, and the police wherever suspicion arose. The new OBA government said it supported Premier Scott's anti-corruption legislation, but criticized him for not having done it himself. To date, comprehensive anti-corruption legislation has not been passed. For local die-hard sports fans, the Nikki Wells story was a huge. We followed it closely all the way to Bradford City and Wembley. Our coverage was called Wells at Wembley. At the start of the year, Nikki lit up the back of the net for Bradford City, setting an almost unbelievable goal-scoring pace. He's a large part of the reason Bradford made it to the Capital One Cup at Wembley. His team lost, but Nikki had plenty of support from home. Our sports guru, James Burton, was there and reported a strong contingent of Bermudian fans in the stands, including Nikki's mother. Back here at home, we heard Nikki's home club, Western Stars, had no TV to watch the big game, so we called our pals at m and and they hooked up a flat screen at no cost. That wraps up the biggest stories for the first quarter of 2013, brought to you by Bermuda Air Conditioning. When we come back, we'll take a look at the next three months of the year. Bermuda Air Conditioning Limited. Bermuda Alternate Energy. Bermuda Insulation Limited. Energy Management Systems. The BAC Group of Companies, celebrating 50 years of improving Bermuda's indoor environments. Welcome back to the Bermuda Sun Year in Review. This clip went viral in 2013, flyboarding in Hamilton Harbor. We brought you the exclusive video that proved very popular with online readers. You can check out the full video at the Bermuda Sun YouTube page. Let's turn now to some of the big stories in the second quarter of 2013. We'll stay with the nautical theme and look at the maiden voyage of the Norwegian breakaway. Our special coverage was called Breakaway Bound for Bermuda, and it was a cliffhanger. No one knew if the Heritage Wharf would be ready in time for the world's newest megaship, carrying about 4,000 passengers. Wharf repairs were still underway even as the ship made her trek here from New York. In the end, the repairs were not completely finished, but they got enough done to allow the ship to berth without complications. I was there as the breakaway came in. And are you surprised the amount of people who come out to see it? I see a lot of people over your shoulder. Um, I actually am surprised. I mean, I didn't think that this many Bermudians would want to be up so early in Dockyard, but like I said, we've been here since about 10 till 7. And since you've been here, there have been people. People are excited. People are taking pictures. People are recording it with iPads, cameras, cell phones. So people are excited about this boat. Our maritime reporter, Simon Jones, broke many stories on this subject. In May, he revealed government went against its own building codes to hasten progress on Heritage Wharf repairs. Simon also got these exclusive pictures showing the lack of progress on the eve of the ship's arrival. 
Okay, from the sea now to the air, and the story that became known as Jetgate. This one involved political leaders at the highest levels. The Premier, the Attorney General, and the Tourism Minister had to concede that a leaked media report was true. They took a private jet to Washington, D.C. to meet with a man interested in bringing gaming to Bermuda. The two-night trip was at the businessman's expense for air travel and accommodations. The opposition alleged the move breached the ministerial code of conduct. The Premier denied any unethical activity and made a personal explanation in Parliament to set the record straight. The Attorney General Mark Pettengill found himself in more hot water not long after. He eventually apologized for it. His comments in Parliament were about a law that makes it illegal to discriminate against people based on sexual orientation. The AG characterized some Christians as Kool-Aid drinkers and homophobes based on their anti-gay views. He said people with those views should leave the country. The opposition and some religious leaders were offended. On this day, many Bermudians said they felt like Bostonians after that city suffered a terrorist attack in April during their famous Boston Marathon. Some died, many critically injured, and even maimed. Runners and spectators from Bermuda at the event told their stories of fear and triumph. We ran a series of reports in the Bermuda Sun. That wraps up the big stories for the second quarter of 2013, brought to you by Bermuda Cablevision. We're only halfway done. More news from this year coming up in less than a minute. Before we go to break, we leave you with scenes from James Martin promotional video. In June of this year, the world learned of his death. He was a guru in IT and a philanthropist. A kayaker found his lifeless body in the waters near his palatial home of Hamilton Harbor. James Martin was 80 years old. We'll be right back. Happy holidays, Bermuda. Once again, Bermuda Cablevision is spreading electronic holiday joy. From December 21st through January 2nd, every Cablevision customer will receive every Cablevision channel at no additional charge. This means you can spend quality time curled up in front of a TV watching movies, sports, and other fine entertainment. Bermuda Cablevision. They sure know how to bring joy to the holidays. Welcome back to the Bermuda Sun Year in Review. Country pride on full display at the National Stadium in June for the 2013 NatWest Island Games. Islands from all over the world were here, and the hometown team did a stellar job. Plenty of medals, a lot of them gold. There was a tragic end to the games, though, as two Faroe Island badminton officials were killed in a car crash on their way home from the Island Games. Now we're taking a look at the big stories of the third quarter. Although a declining economy was a story throughout the year, it was especially pronounced in Q3. In July, we reported 22 job losses at engineering firm GSC, about two dozen gone from HSBC in August, another 18 at Butterfield Bank around the same time. Job cuts this year at Logic and Capital G Bank as well, 9 and 13 respectively. The year was marred with many job losses. We covered extensively the struggles of the unemployed. There was some concern this year that a member of parliament might lose her job in a recall fight. The Bermuda Sun was out front on its reporting of the social media scandal involving St. George's West MP Nandy Davis. The 26-year-old said her Facebook page was hacked, and that's why private messages circulated the country, appearing to show her using offensive language in a spat with another woman. The young MP hired a lawyer and eventually police questioned her. In the end, there were no charges. In the annual Cup Match Classic, a different kind of spat stole the headlines. St. George's batsman Treadwell Gibbons very nearly started a fight on the pitch. He was suspended and apologized for his action, but only 11 days later. Ultimately, Somerset won back the Cup, and its star batsman Gennaro Tucker became the all-time record holder for Cup Match runs. Of course, quite a party ensued for Somerset fans. Speaking of parties, the party of the fall had to be the annual Lennon Bermuda Tribute Concert. This was the second one, the brainchild of Tony Brannan. Thousands of visitors from overseas are said to have flown in for the bash. The Bermuda Sun was a sponsor. The future of the Hamilton waterfront garnered a lot of attention this year. Sir John Swan put his vision forward for public scrutiny. 
But the real headlines belong to the new mayor and city council. They signed a 262-year lease deal with the new developers, but seemingly without the blessing of the government and maybe without the necessary level of transparency. The government ombudsman is now investigating. Thanks to Gatorade for helping us through the third quarter. One more to go after the break. As we take this time out, we'll remind you of one of the saddest stories of the year. 21-month-old Nasaje Stovall was killed when a taxi reversed over him in a private driveway. Interviews with the young boy's father and even the taxi driver revealed immense sadness on all sides. At Kitty Academy, where the toddler was in nursery, they named the school garden after him. We'll be right back. The Florida Gators are struggling in the punishing heat. Welcome back to the Bermuda Sun Year in Review. We wrote two important obituaries in the fourth quarter. The first was Nelson Mandela, the hero of South Africa and the world, died at the age of 95. He was laid to rest in a state funeral. Here at home, tributes poured in for educator Dr. Clifford Maxwell. He touched many lives as an educator, most notably as principal of the Barclay Institute. Let's cover the final quarter of the year now. Here are some of the big stories brought to you by our friends at Cell One. When the thud of the 142-page Sage Commission report hit the House of Assembly, it made a lot of noise. The country is still coming to grips with what's in the document. Commissioners said the government should cut $320 million from its budget over the next four years to balance a huge deficit, currently at $331 million. They recommend cutting the size of the government, privatizing and outsourcing government departments, and really going to work on an underfunded pension scheme. In related news, the then health minister said the Lamfogo Urgent Care Clinic would close down to save money. But the premier overruled her in the face of protest, including a march on the House of Assembly and a petition with 5,000 signatures. The premier gave the last reprieve at the last hour, but it's not indefinite. Lamfogo may still close or fundamentally change next year. The premier and the governor got into a dust-up over a job. We broke this story. The only Bermudian applicant for the director of public prosecutions post, who is apparently qualified, was passed over. The governor decided to extend the contract of the non-Bermudian already holding the post. Although we're committed to the big stories every day of the week, we did have some fun this year with special projects and promotions. More on that after this short break from Cell One. One holiday in Bermuda, Cell One had an awesome sale. It's Cell One's annual holiday sale. Get $100 off all postpaid smartphones. Pick up a $40 prepaid combo. Cozy up with our new home internet bundles and more. First to while stocks last, sell one. The power of more. Here are some of the cool things we did this year at the Bermuda Sun. In March, our Glenn Jones and golf columnist Paul Adams teamed up in a series called Golfer in the Making, presented by Capital G. After some lessons, they challenged Collie Buds and his instructor Scott Roy to a grunge match. Team Jones and Adams won 5-4, following a lot of trash talking by both sides. Remember this photo? We all had a little fun in October writing captions at the expense of the Bermuda Police Service. The image blew up on social media, especially Facebook. Also on Facebook this year, we launched a makeover contest. A few lucky ladies have reaped the benefits and we have the before and after shots to prove it. The Sun put on the first of its kind social media summit with the Chamber of Commerce. Parts of it sold out and led to a spirited exchange of ideas. And in November, we had a team in Boston to cover the historic World Series victory of the Boston Red Sox. Gosling sponsored our coverage and gave us a rare look inside the ultra-plush, dark and stormy boardroom at Fenway Park. We hope you've enjoyed our look back at the year that was, the highs and lows, the serious and not so serious of 2013. 
Remember, you can see all of these stories and this very same program anytime at bermudasun.bm. And there wasn't time to get everything in, so look for our print year in review, publishing on December 31st. I'm Michaela Pierman. From all of us at the Bermuda Sun, happy holidays. We'll leave you with images from our 2013 collection of Sun Guys and Sun Girls. Readers said they wanted us to bring back this feature, and here it is. Look for a new Sun Guy or Girl every week in the Bermuda Sun. Thanks for watching.